Hey everybody, Plasma1945. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about getting your FPS stabilized for better performance and a better gameplay in DCS World. And this actually applies for all games out there. So, what is your FPS problem? Well, first off, everybody wants more FPS, but there's such thing as quantity versus quality. Oh yeah, and of course, if you need quality servers, fox3ms.com. Hit them up for a dedicated server for your DCS squad. But you are needlessly punishing your PC, making your CPU work harder, making your GPU work hotter and harder to create frames that you may not need, creating more frames instead of more stable frames. And you're wasting your CPU making frames and not running scenarios or the other AI portions that are really important in DCS such as, you know, the fall of the bombs, the movement of the tanks and other components. And you can usually see this on busier maps or complex servers. So how many more FPS do you really need? That's a big question. Well, if you're playing something like Valorant or Counter-Strike, everybody says, oh, you need 240 or 540 FPS. There's YouTube videos from Linus and other folks recommending monitors that do all that. Realistically for DCS, it's a sim. You're looking at 30, 60, 90 FPS. VR is good enough at 45 to 50 to 60 FPS, in my opinion. How do you generate those frames, though? So quick review. A bunch of information, airplanes, positions, all that has to be processed by your CPU. The textures, the graphics, whether the missiles are flying, all gets processed, put together, and then fed to your video card, the GPU, which then gets put onto your monitor. Pretty straightforward process. Now, there's a default slider in DCS that says max FPS. That's usually set to 180. Let's say you're flying a regular map, and on that map, your CPU is giving you 127 FPS because it's busy. Or maybe it's like four or five generations old. You might have a high-end GPU giving you 140, but you're still not getting the 180 FPS. But everything is working real hard to get you that FPS. Busy map, you're still trying to get 180 FPS. That's what DCS is asking for. Give me 180. The CPU is working as hard as it can. The GPU is working as hard as it can, but it's a complex map and you only end up with 82 FPS. So you're not getting that 180, but you're making all your equipment work so much harder, causing overheats and stutters. The first solution, is going to the settings before you get into a flight and you can click the vsync button the vsync button will basically look at the capability of your monitor or your vr headset and set it to the same frame rate aka refresh rate all you have to do is uh, go into google and just type in your monitor or your vr headset brand name and type in refresh rate and you'll actually see what its refresh rate in hertz is and I would usually say the easiest thing to say is if it says 90 hertz, you want 90 FPS for the best experience. And that is for every portion of the second that comes up on your screen, there's an equal number of frames to fill that so that you don't get stutter. If you've got a video card and or your settings are such that you can afford more FPS, you can always double that hertz number but you should try to stick with that same 90, 120, 60, and so forth. If your video card is not up to par or you want even more quality and resolution, well, you'll have to half the FPS for the smoothest experience. Remember, if your headset is 60 or your monitor is 60 and you throw 75 FPS at it, it's not an ideal number. It's hard to divide and it can cause a stuttery experience. You can press control pause in DCS or load up an FPS monitoring app. The NVIDIA GeForce experience is really good because it'll actually show you how hard your equipment is working. It'll show you your average FPS and it'll show you your 99% of the FPS. The 99% is really what you want to match with that slider because it'll ensure that you're not generating extra frame rates. So let's say you had a target of 
75 FPS. That's what those performance monitoring things on the screen are saying that you're hitting 75. Well, take that slider and bring it down to 75 or even 10% less than 75. Let's say 70 or 60. Your CPU and GPU are going to work a lot less, giving you a more stable 70 or 60 FPS instead of 180 and all the time freaking out trying to give you more. And you're going to see this in just a second. We're actually going to do this live. Let's say you're getting 130 FPS. You've got a really good CPU and video card. Well, your max FPS is still set to 180, which means everything's working hard. Well, you see that you're getting 130. Remove 10% from that. That gets you about 120. Set the slider to 120. And all of a sudden, your CPU and GPU start working a lot less, making it available for okay, other so things. We're okay, jumping so into we're DCS good. world here. We've got a fish bed and a phantom and they're going to chase each other around. There's a slider for max FPS and down below it, you can also see the grayed out option for VSync. You can only change VSync once you're not flying and you'll have to restart, but the slider for max FPS, you can play with at your convenience. So I'm getting around 80 FPS average, if you can see on the top right hand corner there in the NVIDIA experience, maybe 100 FPS. And the 99% of my, the rest of my frames are around 70 FPS. If you look at the GPU power, it's eating 380 watts of power and the temperature is pushing up to 70 Celsius, which is quite a bit. So all these things are not healthy. Now, the reason it's so loaded, even into 4090, is because I've got a lot of reshade stuff going on. Reshade can easily take away 20 FPS and really load up your GPU. But let's take a look at that number and dial it down a bit. So let's dial it down from 180 down to say 60 FPS and look at the temperature and number. The GPU power usage, even with reshade turned on, drops from almost 400 watts down to 250 to about 300 watts. Your temperature of the video card is also lowered down to 60 Celsius. And that's making your hardware last longer. Your fans don't need to turn up as much and your graphics card and CPU don't need to work that much harder. The FPS and the 99% FPS are the two numbers you're looking at. You want those as close as possible to each other. So as you can see here, 60 and 58 are very close. The GPU and CPU are not very busy, meaning that if I was in a complex map with lots of simulation, there would be that spare room for the other things to process and run. If anybody is going to argue with me that you need 120 or 240 frames per second for DCS world, I'm going to say that you're playing the wrong game. You should be focusing on your flying skills, on your airmanship, and on knowing your airplane because it's a sim. If you want to go play an arcade game, um, go play Metal Storm. Great arcade game. You can see some links to it in my description and on my channel. So with reshade turned off, as you can see, the uh, CPU and GPU usage definitely drops quite a bit. And again, you're trying to match those frames per second. Here we've locked it down to 90. Reshade, I believe is turned off in this configuration. Maybe not, I can't quite tell, but the temperature and the wattage is lower. And anybody who says, oh, you're being throttled by your CPU or your GPU, nope, you can see it right there. Both the CPU and the GPU are pretty much chilling out right now. Now, as you can see, it's 90 there and 78 in the 99%, which means that we still could lower it a little bit more to get it closer to the 99% FPS. So we can bring it down to, say, 75. And let's see how much of a benefit that gives us. Cuts our power usage by a little bit. The GPU temperature is down to 55 Celsius instead of almost 70. It's not overheating at all. The frame rates are much closer to each other. And if you've got a monitor that can do variable refresh rate and you don't get any tearing, you can set to whatever FPS you really want. Otherwise, stick to those 60s, 90s, and 120s. I find that in the G2 helmet, I'm perfectly happy at 60 FPS. Even 45 or 50 FPS is still enough. I don't get pukey or airsick. If your video card can't keep up, set it to the maximum settings you possibly can. 
and then try dialing down your FPS, I would say try to stay above 30 FPS. That's your bare minimum. Here I've dialed it down to 70, pretty close. The usage has dropped even more on all the other components. But a couple of things to keep in mind, things such as MSAA will eat up quite a bit of your performance. Leave that at two times if you can. Shadows will destroy your GPU performance. Play around with those, see if you can uh, somehow improve your performance. But do try to target that 99% of the FPS to be at around 60. It's a good sweet spot to be at. If you're getting more than that, let's say you're getting 85 instead of 60. Dial it down to 60. Those extra 25 FPS aren't going to make much of a difference, but it'll unload your CPU to do other things. And as you can see, we've gotten from using almost 400 watts of power now down to under 200 watts of power. The GPU temperature has dropped by 20 Celsius. Same thing applies to the CPU. The CPU isn't being hammered. I'm at a stable 60 FPS by simply dragging that slider down from 180 down to 60. And this makes all the difference. Now I turned on reshade and as you can see, the usage of the video card and everything else has hopped up, but the FPS is still staying pretty stable, it's still staying pretty close. But reshade will add quite a bit of load to your video card performance. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Leave comments, likes, share this video, subscribe, and Plasma1945 is out of here. Fly safe, everybody.